All right, what's going on everybody? I'm back today with another video. And in today's video, we're gonna start with some light mesh loop analysis. And we're gonna answer these five questions, A, B, C, D, and E, corresponding to the circuit on the right. All right, so let's get right into it and see what we can do to solve these questions. So first we have number A, and it says apply KCL at node X to find I naught, right? So we have to figure out what current value I naught is at this node, right? We're going to use KCL at node X to figure that out. Let's see how we can do that, right? So if we write this node X over here, right, as node X, we know that the rule for KCL and any node in particular is that the current entering the node must equal the current leaving the node, right? So we know that the sum of the currents has to equal zero. And that is what we're going to use to help us solve for what I naught is, right? So let's just say entering, right? So let's do enter is positive and leave is negative, right? So let's say node X is here. We're going to put enter, right? So we know that two milliamps, I mean, two amps actually is coming into the node, right? So we know it's entering node X, right? So it's going towards node X, right? So we know this is going to be entering. So plus two amps, right? We know that 1.5 amps, however, is leaving node X, right? So 1.5 amps is going downward. So it's not entering node X, but it's leaving node X. So we know that 1.5 is leaving, 1.5 amps. And we also know that I naught is leaving node X to the right, right? If, cause if I naught was entering node X, it would actually be going counterclockwise, but because it's leaving, it's going clockwise, right? So I naught is going to the right side. So we know that. So now that we know that we can put I naught over here and I naught is our unknown value. So what equation can we make, right? So we have enter as positive and leave as negative. So therefore our equation is going to be, and if we know that the sum of currents is equal to zero, our equation is going to be two amps, right? So two amps is positive. It's a plus two amps because entering is positive. And we said leaving is negative. So two amps minus 1.5 amps because it's negative, right? So leaving is negative, so 1.5 is leaving, so we have minus 1.5 amps, and I naught is also leaving, so we have minus I naught. And then we know that the sum of these currents is gonna be equal to zero, right? That was our rule. So if we bring I naught over to this side, and we change the side because a negative I naught flipped over to the other side is a positive I naught, so then we get two amps minus 1.5 amps is equal to I naught, right? A positive I naught. And this in turn becomes 0 0.5 amps is equal to I naught, right? So then that's our final answer for number eight. I naught is 0 0.5 amps, right? And, and you can see how we figured that out by isolating for I naught as we brought this over and made I naught by itself and then just solve two minus 1.5 to get 0 0.5 amps, right? So now let's go ahead and do number B. So now for number B, what we have to do is calculate VR2 and the power absorbed by R2, right? So we're basically focusing on this contraption right here. So they, sorry, they want us to find VR2 and we, we want to find out the power absorbed by this R2 resistor, which is 10 ohms, right? So how much power is absorbed by this 10 ohm resistor, right? So let's figure out how to do that. So we know that I naught is equal to 0 0.5 amps, right? So 0 0.5 amps is coming through this loop over here, right? And it's going to go into the VR2 uh, node the positive side over here and the negative side over here. So it's entering the positive side. So because current enters the positive side of any circuit element, we know automatically that power is absorbed, right? If the current is entering the negative side, we can assume that power is being supplied, right? From, from that uh, specific element, right? So if a current is entering the positive side, always remember that power is being absorbed, right? So if we look at this, how do we find voltage? Well, we know that the VR2, right? So voltage, our equation, is V is equal to IR, right? So in this loop, if we analyze this, this second half of the loop, right? I naught is 0 0.5 amps. So 0 0.5 amps comes down over here and it enters this VR2 from the positive side, right? So then we know that our I is 0 0.5 amps, right? And then our resistor value is 10 ohms, right? So that's the 10 ohms that's over here to represent what the VR2 is. So 0 0.5 amps times 10 ohms ultimately results in five volts, right? So then we can assume that VR2 is equal to five volts, right? So now that we know that VR2 is equal to five volts, 
Now we can then calculate the power absorbed by R2. There's two ways to calculate this, right? So we can either do that the power is equal to V times I, all right, so we can find the voltage across this 10 ohm resistor, which is 5 volts, and then multiply it by the current, which is 0 0.5 amps, which is entering that circuit element. Or we can do that power is equal to I squared times R. Or we can do power is equal to V squared divided by R, right? So there's three different equations for power that we can use to solve for the same uh, answer in this equation, right? So for this to make things simple, we're just going to do power is equal to V times I. But on your own time, please make sure to check out the other two power equations and plug in the values. And I can assure you that you'll also get the same value. So there's multiple ways to reach the final destination of a solution, right? So for this specific example, to find the power absorbed by the R2 resistor, we can do that power is equal to the voltage of R2, which is 5 volts, right? Multiplied by the current, which is 0 0.5 amps. Right? So then the power absorbed is essentially 2.5 watts absorbed, right? Because we have to remember the current is entering the positive side. It's coming from the positive side. So the current's going into the power positive side, which means that power is being absorbed, right? So that's the answer to number B. The power absorbed by R2 is 2.5 watts, and then that is how we solved it. So now let's go ahead and solve number C. So now when we look at number C, we see that calculate the power of the three volt source and indicate if it is supplied or absorbed, right? So let's look through this uh, logically. So we have I naught coming down here. So I naught's coming down here. The current is entering the positive side of the voltage source, right? So if we separate this and we can use mesh loop analysis for this, so we can only consider the right side of this uh, circuit and then kind of close off this loop. So we know that the current's entering the positive side of the three volt source, right? And like I said before, if the current is entering the positive side, we can already assume that the power is going to be absorbed, right? If it enters the negative side, that means that power is going to be supplied, right? So automatically we know that the three volt source is absorbing power, right? But now we have to figure out how much power is being absorbed. Well, we obviously know our simple power equation because we know that power is equal to VI, right? And we know that the power of this three voltage source is we know the voltage is going to be three volts. Well, what's the current? Well, the current is just our I naught, right? Because we're going to close off this loop and only look at the right side. So I naught is still equal to 0 0.5 amps. So we know that the, our current is going to be 0 0.5 amps. And essentially, this becomes 1.5 watts of power being absorbed by the 3 volt source, right? And that's how we kind of solve that easily. That's a simple question. So we have power, the simple equation, V times I. We know the voltage of the voltage source is 3 volts. The current entering the positive side, which means the power is absorbed. And the current that we use to multiply V times I is just I naught, which is the current in this second loop over here, right? So power is equal to V times I. And then that is how we answer part C. So let's go ahead straight and solve for part D. So now for part D, what we're going to do is apply KVL. And for KVL, we're just going to find the voltages. And we know that the sum of the voltages across a certain circuit must equal zero. That's how we know that a circuit works properly, right? So the sum of the voltages have to equal zero. So we know that they want us to determine the voltage VC across the 1.5 amp current source, right? So they want us to find out what VC is, right? And another easy way to do this is just to close off the left side of the circuit. So if we close off the left side of the circuit and only work on the right side, we kind of have a little box over here. And then essentially we can make our loop around this and find out what VC is equal to, right? And that is, this is how we do that. So we're going to start off, right? And we're going to go in a clockwise position all the way around, and we're going to sum up all the voltages, right? So we know, let's go ahead, let's start. We're going to come over here, and we know that the first, first voltage that we encounter is VR2, right? And we know that's a positive, like the current is entering the positive side because we're going in a clockwise direction, right? So the current enters the positive side of VR2. And we know that VR2 is equal to 5 volts. So we're going to go ahead and write down 5 volts over here. Then the current continues to go. It exits the negative side. And it enters the positive side of the 3 volt voltage source, right? So we know the 3 volts is positive. So plus 3 volts. And we're going to add that to the voltage. So the voltage source over here is plus 3 volts. Right? And now the current's going to leave the negative and enter the negative side of VC, right? So take in that this time is different because before it entered the positive side 
positive side, but now the current enters the negative side. And because it enters the negative side, then we do minus, and then we don't know this what this is, so we're going to put minus VC, right? So that is what the right side mesh loop for the KVL looks like. So we get 5 volts for VR2 plus the 3 volt voltage source minus VC, and then that is the end of our loop, right, in terms of voltages. So then this ultimately equals to zero. So then if we simplify this, we get 8 volts. And then if we bring this VC over, it becomes plus VC because the sign changes. 8 volts is equal to plus VC. So essentially VC is just equal to 8 volts, right? And that's how we use it and isolate using our KVL equation to determine the voltage, right? So the voltage of VC across the 1.5 amp current source is just 8 volts. And then that is how we did that using KVL in the right side loop. So now let's go ahead and do number E. So now when we do number E, what they want us to do is calculate the power of the 1.5 amp source and indicate if it, if it is supplied or absorbed, right? So now what are we going to do over here? So we know our simple power equation. We know that power is equal to voltage multiplied by the current, right? So we know that positive power means that power is being absorbed and negative power means that power is being supplied, right? So let's look over here. We know that our VC, we calculated VC in the previous question, VC is equal to 8 volts, right? So we know that the voltage that's going to be needed is 8 volts in this equation. So the V is going to be 8 volts. And we know this because we're going to kind of isolate this section over here, right? So we have VC and 1.5 amps side by side with another in the same area. And we know the current is coming downwards, entering the positive node first, right? So what did I always say? If current is entering the positive node of anything, that means that the whole power of that specific element is being absorbed and not supplied because it's only supplied if the current is entering the negative side, right? But we know if the current is coming downwards, it's entering the positive side coming down over here, right? So we know that power is automatically absorbed. So you can go ahead and say that already. And so essentially we just multiply these two values together, the VC, which is eight volts, and the current I, which is 1.5 amps, so essentially what we get is equal to 8 times 1.5. And essentially what we get is just equal to 12 volts. I mean 12 watts, my bad, 12 watts being absorbed. Right? So essentially we can say that the power of the 1.5 amp source is 12 watts being absorbed, right? And essentially that is the end of the problem. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video and understood. If you guys liked, make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. If you guys have any questions or concerns, please comment down below or email me at shareanacademy at gmail.com. And if you guys have any specific questions or concepts or topics that you want me to cover and make a video on, please comment down below and I'll make sure to make a video on it as soon as possible. All right, thanks for watching.